So you're looking to buy a lens, but you have no idea what 50 millimeter means or what an f-stop is and all the numbers on the lenses, you just don't know what they mean and you're not sure what lens to get for your camera. Well, I've totally been there. So today I'm going to make it super simple for you to understand what all the numbers mean on the lenses so that you can get the right lens for you. You got to just press record. Hey everybody, my name is Nolan Molt with Think Media. Now, first off, I want you to know that every lens is going to be a little bit different with the way that they show their numbers and all the information on the lens. So some companies are going to show more information on their lenses where other companies are not going to show that kind of information, but I'm just going to share with you everything that you really need to know and not all the stuff that you don't need to know. So the very first thing to understand is not all lenses are going to fit on every single camera. For example, if you have a Canon camera, then there are specific Canon lenses that they make to fit onto the Canon cameras. A Sony lens is not going to fit onto that Canon camera and vice versa. Now there's also some other companies that make lenses and these can can fit on multiple cameras if you get the right version. For example, right here we have a Sigma lens that is going to fit onto a Sony camera. We also have a Tamron lens that fits onto a Sony camera. Now there are adapters that are going to let you put Sony lenses onto Canon cameras and vice versa, but I'm not even going to get into that since this is the beginner's guide. So the first thing that you need to do when even looking for a lens is to make sure that it's going to work with the camera that you have. And we do this in two different ways. We need to make sure that it has the correct lens mount, meaning if you get a Tamron lens, we want to make sure that this mount goes onto my Sony camera, not a Canon camera, if I want this to go onto my Sony camera. And the second thing you need to know is the sensor type of your camera. This is to make sure that you have the correct lens for your camera type. Now you can find out this stuff just by doing a quick Google search. So let's say you have a Canon 90D. We're gonna ask what kind of mount is on the Canon 90D. Now on Canon's website, we can see that the 90D has an EF mount. So when I look at this lens, if I wanna use it on my 90D, I can see that it has the EF S right here. Now I'm going to get more into the S part and that's why you need to know what kind of sensor your camera has. You need to know if your camera has a crop sensor or a full frame sensor. Maybe it's a micro four third sensor. This might sound confusing, but again, just Google it and find out what kind of sensor type that your camera has. With another Google search, we can see that the 90D has an APS-C sensor. Now, before I even get into this, I want to say it is confusing. This is something that I had to wrap my mind around and I promise you, this is probably the hardest part to understand and then it gets a lot easier from here. So for example, with Canon, we have Canon EFS. We also have lenses that just say Canon EF. Now what's really the difference? To make this simple, Canon made a bunch of cameras with the same mount, but because there's different sensor types, you have their full frame DSLRs, you also have their crop sensor DSLRs. They made two different types of lenses. They made lenses for the full frame cameras that will also work on the APS-C or crop sensor cameras, but then they made lenses specifically for the crop sensor cameras that when you put them on the full frame cameras, even though they actually fit on, there is gonna be vignetting. This is because that lens is specifically made for the small censored camera. Quick pause because this actually isn't true. So you cannot put on EFS lenses onto a full frame camera because they have a rubber piece that doesn't allow you to do this. However, with other camera brands like Sony, you can put all their lenses on either camera. So you can put on a Sony lens designed for the APS-C, the smaller camera. You can put that onto a full frame Sony camera, but you will get vignetting. Okay, back to the video. And right here where it says EFS, that is letting us know that it's made for the smaller censored camera. So this lens would work perfectly fine on the Canon 90D. Now Sony does something very similar with their cameras as well. We have their crop sensor mirrorless cameras. We also have their full frame mirrorless cameras. Now the Sony cameras that we recommend on this channel have the E-mount. And so you can put these lenses on either camera, the smaller sensor or the larger sensor. Well, how do we know which lenses were made specifically for the full frame cameras? They have come out with these lenses called FE and F you can think of full frame and this is going to work on your full frame Sony cameras as well as your crop sensor cameras. However, if you have an APS-C sensor size in your camera, you may not want to go with a full frame lens because it's going to be much more expensive. And so if you get something that just says E-mount, it doesn't say FE, it's going to be cheaper and it's going to work on something like your A6600, A6100, perfectly fine. And if you have a crop censored camera, I really don't recommend buying the full frame lenses unless 
unless you know for sure that you're gonna upgrade to a full frame camera in the future. Now, thankfully on Amazon, they've actually made it much easier for us to make sure we are getting the right lens for the right camera. Let's say I'm looking to get a Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4 lens. Again, that sounds probably like gibberish to you. And I'm gonna explain exactly what all of that means here very shortly. But on Amazon, when I'm looking at this lens, I can actually double check, make sure that it works on my camera. Let's say I wanna see if it works on the 90D. Well, it actually doesn't because you can see that it's made for EF M, which is for Canon's mirrorless system. So this specific lens is only going to work on Canon EF M cameras like the M50, the M6, any of the Canon mirrorless cameras that are crop censored. Again, this is probably confusing, but you just need to know what mount your camera has. And then on Amazon, you can always double check to make sure that it works with your camera. Okay, let's talk about the numbers on these lenses and what they mean so that you can get the right lens for you. Let's start with the number that comes just before MM. This stands for millimeters. This right here is a 30 millimeter lens. And this is actually a Sigma lens that works on our Sony APS-C cameras. So what exactly does 30 millimeters mean? This number simply tells us how zoomed in or zoomed out this lens is. You can get lenses that are zoomed in really far. You can also get really wide angle lenses. And the way you can tell is based on this number. Now, as this number goes higher and higher, you're zooming in more and more. And as this number gets lower, you're getting a lens that's gonna give you a wider shot. I like using wide angle lenses for shots like this. And right now, kind of what you're seeing is like a 16 millimeter look. So 30 millimeter is actually going to zoom a bit more in and then I'm just gonna have to back away from the camera but I like using a wide angle lens with a lower number millimeter for YouTube videos now in this Canon lens we actually have two numbers we have a 10 18 millimeters and this lets me know that this lens can actually zoom in and out from 10 millimeters to 18 millimeters so 10 millimeters is going to be wider and then you can zoom in a bit more up to 18 millimeters because this has two numbers this is a zoom lens now when you have a lens that does not have that, it has one number like 30 millimeters, this is a prime lens because it's stuck at one focal length. And you're probably thinking, why would I ever get a prime lens when I could get a zoom lens and easily adjust my shot when a prime lens, you can't zoom in at all. Typically for the price, you can get a much better shallow depth of field, get that blurry background with something like a prime lens. And you can actually tell on the lens based on the numbers, if it's gonna give you a shallow depth of field or that blurry background. And this is because it all depends on the aperture that your lens can give you. Now I'm gonna leave some videos in the description if you wanna learn more about aperture and how to get that blurry background as well shutter speed and ISO, I'll leave links in the description down below. But to oversimplify this, if you have a lower number f-stop, you're going to get more of a blurry background. So let me show you how to find that number on your lens. On this prime lens, right after 30 millimeter, we see a 1 colon 1.4. Now we can just ignore the 1 for now. We're looking at that second number, the 1.4. That's the number that you want to look at on your lens. That's letting me know the lowest number f-stop that this lens can go to. Now if you have anything from like 1.2 to 2.0, 0.8, you're typically going to get a blurry background in your shot. Now, if we take a look at this Canon zoom lens, we can see that we have that one colon. Again, let's just ignore that. The 4.5 to 5.6. Again, we are seeing two sets of numbers here, and that is our aperture. So the lowest f-stop that we can get is 4.5 using this lens. However, what is the 5.6 on this lens? That is letting us know that when we zoom this lens all the way into 18 millimeters, the new lowest f-stop is going to be 5.6. So when we have this zoomed out at 10 millimeters, we are going to be able to go to 4.5, we can't go any lower. We can't get a shallow depth of field with this lens. But when we zoom into 18 millimeters, it's now going to be 5.6. Now this is common with zoom lenses, especially with kit lenses. That's why when you zoom in on your kit lens, the image actually gets a little bit darker because that f-stop doesn't go as low, doesn't let as much light into the lens. Now, if you do not want this exposure changing as you zoom into your shot, I totally understand, especially for videographers out there, you want to look for a lens that is a zoom lens but doesn't have two sets of apertures for example i have an 18 to 35 millimeter lens so this is going to zoom in but the f-stop consistently is at 1.8 so when i zoom in it's still at 1.8 when i zoom out it's at 1.8 these lenses are going to be more expensive but are definitely worth it especially if you're a videographer or if you need this for your photography now i have three more very important but very quick things for you guys but first like this video and then comment down below what kind of camera do you have or what kind 
kind of camera are you planning on picking up? Let me know in the comments below. Now, another thing you want to look for on your lens is the minimum focal distance. Now, lenses are able to keep you in focus just like this, but if you get too close to a certain lens, it's not going to be able to keep you in focus anymore. On my prime lens, there's some very small writing and it says 0.3 meters or 0.98 feet to infinity. This means that it can focus from that point all the way to infinity. You don't really need to pay attention to this number when you're looking to buy a camera because most lenses are gonna give you a very reasonable focus distance. However, if you do need to focus on something that's extremely close, then try looking into macro lenses. The next thing to know about your lens is the thread size. Now, every lens is going to have a thread right at the front of their lens so that you can put on an ND filter or something like a polarizer. However, lenses come in different sizes and so you are going to get different thread sizes. Now, this little circle with the dash in it is letting us know the thread size. And so 52 is the thread size of this lens. On this Canon lens, we can see that same symbol letting us know the thread size is 67 millimeters. So this is going to be a larger thread size than the 52 millimeter thread size. But if you wanna use one filter on all your lenses, if they're different sizes, you can look up step up rings and then you can buy a filter for your largest lens and then get step up rings for your smaller lenses. The last important thing to look for is for stabilization in your your lenses. These days, a lot of these lenses actually have stabilization inside of them, which makes it a lot easier to take nighttime photos or videography. Now for Canon, it's just called image stabilization and we can see the IS and that is standing for the image stabilization on this lens. On Sony lenses, you're going to see OSS and this stands for optical steady shot. Each company has a different name, so make sure you Google the right name when you are looking for a lens that has stabilization. If you want to learn how to use your camera and lenses the correct way, then definitely check out our camera basics playlist by clicking on the screen right now and I'll see you guys in the next video.